Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Holistic Health Talk uh, live podcast. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And I would like to introduce very soon my guest for the very first time, a very special guest, Mr. Stephen R. Santangelo originally from California but now resides in the state of Kentucky with a very large very comprehensive non-GMO organic farm. He's an expert organic farmer and a longtime old-school fitness professional and fitness expert and uh, we will be discussing uh, aside from uh, natural holistic uh, health and proper diet like it used to be back in the day we will be discussing uh, exercise resistance fitness bands and exercise for uh, older adults okay primarily fitness bands as a an excellent uh, alternative uh, source of uh, exercise, outstanding exercise equipment that I personally use and that I personally promote and uh, we, will, we will get into depth about exercise bands and fitness for older adults, uh, exercise as a form of uh, fountain of youth for older adults and particularly uh, uh, Stephen R. Santangelo's uh, special fitness bands and uh, and his organic GMO uh, produce he's also a beekeeper um, so it should be a very very fascinating uh, show for holistic health talk the very first time ever on my show live and uh, we will now go to my guest Stephen Santangelo Yes, uh, uh, yes. Uh, older, uh, older people, people oh, yeah. that accept taking pharmaceuticals, and I was making the comment that the almost all people accept the fact that by the time they're in their 40s, they have to take pharmaceuticals. That's a natural part of life. And when they say, well, th it's natural that I should do it, and I always tell them, I said, this isn't natural, it's common. There's a big difference between being common and what is natural. And uh, just way too many folks. The average American takes five pharmaceuticals on a regular basis. Wow. Now, if you do the simple math, um, I haven't had any pharmaceuticals, not even over-the-counter drugs like aspirin, Tylenol, none of that, since October of 1992. Okay. So that means I don't take any. Someone out there has to be taking ten of them in order to make the average American only taking five. Wow. So simple math tells us that our country is very drug. In fact, Americans take more pharmaceuticals, especially painkillers, than the entire world combined. Very dangerous epidemic nowadays, prescription painkillers. So. Yeah, and people don't realize how easy it is to become addicted to OTCs or pharmaceuticals. And they don't look at it as being negative because it's it's not classified as a recreational drug, even though in many cases it's used in combination with recreational drugs. You talk to someone and they'll talk about how bad the epidemic is right now in this country with heroin, that it's now taking over cocaine and meth. But those same people aren't talking about the number of people that are dropping dead every year from pharmaceutical overdoses and there are even more deaths per year from pharmaceuticals that people are following the prescription. They're taking what is recommended. It's not in combination with recreational drugs. It's not a deliberate overdose like suicide. It is following the directions that are given to them. And I always tell people, don't take my word for it. Go to the CDC and look it up. It's all right there. 
And yet that's very um, acceptable. It's uh, and not to get the, off the subject too much, but it's like the same argument between legalizing marijuana and alcohol. Yeah, um, and uh, the number of deaths every year from alcohol is, you know, well over 20,000. Well, and, and that, yeah. You know, that's just driving, drunk driving. It's yeah. not you know, cirrhosis of the liver and other diseases. Yeah. Now, how many people die of marijuana each year? Hey, Jesse Ventura said it perfectly. Uh, uh, somebody smokes joints, they smoke marijuana, they go sit in the corner, listen to Jimi Hendrix and mellow that's out. Right. Somebody that's gets right. drunk, they go home, beat their wife, or they kill somebody driving. Yes, exactly. You know, uh, and people don't understand that. You don't become violent when you smoke pot. You know, it's a downer. It's a depressant. It totally takes the nervous system down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people will be more than happy to stare at a fish tank for a couple of days rather than going out committing a crime. Meditate, uh, yeah. But not to get too much into that political stuff, but I want to draw that parallel as to you know, how people think and what they have been brainwashed into thinking and manipulated into thinking. So, yeah. uh, you know, when our parents were growing up, they rarely would go to the doctors. Um, they weren't drug-induced the way young children are. And that's one of the reasons why so many of them lived more of a healthy life. Yeah, well, and, well, and my great, yeah. That generation's uh, life expectancy increase. Yeah. It's not our generation. You know, there will be those of us who will live a longer life. And when I promote nutrition, when I promote exercise, especially to the older crowd, it's not about living longer. That whole longevity thing is the fountain of youth that's promoted by the supplement companies. So take this, you're going to add three years to your life. Take this, you're going to add another 10 years to your life. It's not about longevity. It's about the quality of life and making every day something that you could look back on and go, wow, yeah, I felt good that day. I can't wait till tomorrow. I accomplished something yesterday. Yeah. I want to accomplish something today. It's about the quality of life, the vitality that we could live with now. How you feel. Yeah, and, yeah exactly. And, 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 just, the, and the self-confidence that comes with how better you look, too. too or, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you Mike, know, it's Mike. like you brought up the... The guy that says, well, I can cross the street and get hit by a truck. Well, yeah, of course. But what does that have to do with your quality of life and how you felt up until you got hit by the truck? Yeah, all of that we can't control. So that's why I never talk about longevity in that respect. Mm -hmm. I always talk about the quality of life and how you're living in the present, what you are accomplishing in the present. Now, my, my um, Italian grandparents, um, uh, as children, they grew up during the Great Depression. And uh, it, seems right. like, it seems like many ethnic people that grew up during the Great Depression, they all ended up having fantastic backyard vegetable gardens with fruit trees and herbs and and they and they yeah. stored it. They stored things. Uh, for, they used the mason jars and all that. And they stored food away for the winter. And they had it in the basement on shelves. They all had this similarity. So right. out of necessity, they and they, I'm sure they learned from their parents. They mm -hmm. grew produce in the suburbs. Yep. And some people have even done it in the city with urban uh, gardening and uh, they yeah, it can be done it's that nowadays people don't want to put the effort out they always use the excuse I don't have time for this I don't have time for that but they sure have time for everything else now I don't expect people to do what we do as you know I'm really over the top and familiar with what I do to produce a very high quality uh, food and a uh, uh, highly nutritious food. It, yeah, it would be great if more people took that avenue, but I don't expect them to, but there are so many things that people can do, and it's a matter of time. It's a matter of structuring your time and doing it. Now, when I grew up, uh, my, my parents had a garden ever since I could remember. So, you know, your typical little Italian garden. My grandfather, he had a garden, a family garden. Um, 
my wife, she was raised on a 600-acre farm out in Iowa. She grew up working on the farm, learning to cook, which unfortunately most people don't do anymore. A self-sustaining farm, a family farm. Right. So, you know, that was a lifestyle. And that's mm -hmm. when children were part of it. You know, I remember visiting my grandfather in Jersey, not far from you, uh, when we would visit. Yeah, I would be out there every day with him, watering, you know, weeding, pulling crops. And that was just part of the lifestyle. I didn't look at it as, wow, this is work. I don't want to do this. I want to go play with my cousins. No, that was part of the family yeah. structure. I even had chickens, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 it's like uh, it was a lifestyle. It was, it was, it, you grew up with the with the uh, oh for God's sakes my my Italian relatives had fig trees in the north they used to cover it with burlap and and mulch yeah. and and you know for the winter they used right. to wrap the fig tree they had the uh, uh, I know an Italian family that not only has vegetables herbs but they have a uh, kiwi fruit growing on a trellis they have grapes they have I mean you grew up with this and uh, um. A lot of modern families have no idea how to, how to grow a friggin' uh, a string bean, for God's sakes. You know, right. but you grew up with this, and it was vine ripened, it was delicious, it was organic. And I think it should be a course in grammar school and high school, uh, a, a home gardening. I think all that wasted uh, uh, landscape land. At every grammar and school and high school, uh, there should be a garden there. It should be part of their curriculum, learning that. And they, yeah. they, could, they could donate the produce to uh, the homeless, the soup kitchens, food pantries. Uh, 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 county parks, state parks should have fruit orchards for the poor. Uh, but, but as a school um, course, learning organic home Garden. Yeah. The unfortunate part is all anything related to what you're talking about, especially in the arts, music, art classes, um, that's being eliminated and kids are being taught on a computer. Even in preschool, they're being taught on a computer and everything is so technologically geared and it's removing the creativity. I, I just in no way believe that teaching kids how to uh, push buttons on a computer, I don't care what the game is, I don't care what the image is they're putting together, that is not creativity. There is not the connection between the mind and the hand, well, as they, in old school art. Well, kids don't go out and play like I did. No, they don't. They're, they have their iPhones, iPads, i this, i that, and uh, it, it's a real shame, and we are seeing a generation of zombies because the world now is based upon that technology. Well, and shut it. You, still. you can't do business without the technology. You know, you really can't. I mean, obviously, I use it to my advantage with the Internet and Facebook, social media. As you know, my page is, is a business setup. It's not for gossip. It's not for dissing. And uh, I greatly appreciate that I have uh, close to 1,800 followers right now. It's growing all the time. And I appreciate the fact that everyone respects what the page is about. And they don't get on with a lot of this social media junk. Um, however, a great many of the people on my page are closer to our age. And they still have that sense of value, that sense of respect. And I think that also presents a mindset for older people um, in their 50s, in their 60s, to allow them to look at life differently, to have a mutual respect. Not that I'm better than you are and I'm going to prove it, or I'm, I have a hotter body than you are, that you have. But we have this more holistic approach or holistic outlook on life. And that's part of being youth. Um, I don't remember who it was. A very prominent author once said that youth is wasted on the young. And 
you know, many decades later, that quote is very true. Uh, there are many adults my age, even older, that have a lot more zest and a lot more youthfulness than people that are teen teenagers, people that are in their 20s. So that has a lot to do with longevity. It has a lot to do with the value of life, your well-being. If you don't think about disease, you don't think about getting sick because you're too busy enjoying life and you're too busy planning the next day. You're too busy looking ahead instead of living life, looking in the rear view mirror. And enjoying life plays a major role in how you live, how you treat others. And that's something that a lot of people don't have anymore. Um, there's just a certain value in life that is lost. Well, this because is, it, yeah. as you mentioned earlier, it's all about me type of uh, attitude, whether it's in sports or non-athletics, just all across the board. We see this in politics. We see it in schools. We see it everywhere. Yeah, it's a me generation, me, myself, and I. It's very self-centered. Uh, 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 sometimes uh, it, it, it's frightening to, uh, because some some people are actually behave uh, uh, like sociopaths, where they they have, they show no remorse in what they do. They they can't distinguish right from wrong. The young people in my region, they don't say thank you when uh, I hold the door open for them. No way. That's but, very but, true. But the older yeah, my wife and I just are, are blown away with that. Yeah. And, and rarely hear thank you. And usually the people that you do get a thank you from are people, you know, uh, my age, our age, or older. Mm -hmm. Because that was part of life. That was part of respecting people. And we it got old-fashioned. We got old. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, it doesn't make any difference whether you like that person or not. It's a matter of just respecting people in, uh, yeah. in uh, overall. And we got old-fashioned discipline back then. Okay, the kids today, they're not, they're treated, they're negotiated with as an equal. There, there is no alpha parent anymore. There's no, right. you know, we got the old-fashioned discipline and we grew up to respect others. And uh, I don't, I, I, I think we grew up just fine. Um, uh, oh yeah. But getting back to your 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 page, you yeah. know that I I love the beautiful natural multicolors of your farm fresh food, and I I post it on uh, my group. Everything is food, and uh, yes. people thank you. I appreciate people that. Love it. Yeah, and, and this is this is the beauty of organic non GMO farm fresh produce, nature's beauty. And so when you post a photo of all different color peppers or whatever, I mean, that's nature's work of art. I just have to share it. And, uh, you know, and, uh, could you imagine having a good juice extractor or a ninja or a Vitamix and, and making smoothies from produce like that, locally oh, yeah. grown? It's incredible. It's incredible. It truly is. Uh, my wife and I were just talking about it today because we're finished harvesting, so we don't have the fresh foods. Now we're using foods that we have frozen or have canned. And, um, you know, we're 99% sustainable when it comes to food. Uh, we, we don't eat out. Um, I couldn't imagine what it would be like eating out at a restaurant. It's been so many years. Um, but we were talking about that, that, you know, we don't have the fresh juice anymore in the morning or uh, post-workout juice. And uh, we do miss it but we get to look forward to it. And I always make the comment often, and you have probably caught this, that I do not manipulate the color or Photoshop any of the vegetables or fruits that we present because I want people to know what real food is, hopefully encourage people to mm -hmm. find a local supplier, um, encourage people to grow their own. And, and people don't have to grow enough tomatoes to last a season. But, you know, enough to have some good sauce once in a while um, or just bite into to, to throw in a salad. Just enough as a reminder, maybe enough to inspire people to uh, promote healthy living. You know, uh, 
30, 40, 50 years ago and when uh, my parents were growing up, you know, they went through the Depression and World War II. This is what it was all about, fresh food, you know, canned food, packaged food pretty much did not exist. Not toxic factory farm uh, of Monsanto GMO poison, but food the way it was meant to be. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, points of uh, vitality that I often post on my page, um, there are key elements. And this is uh, another reason why I think a lot of the uh, um, people our age are living better because when we ate real foods, we had foods that contained enzymes. We had foods that had minerals. We had foods that were alkalizing, that would uh, balance the blood pH. We had foods that were anti-inflammatory. We had foods that were loaded with antioxidants. And we had foods that supported our natural hormones. Unfortunately, today's food does not have that. I was, it's totally yeah. opposite. It's devoid of minerals and enzymes. Uh, most foods nowadays, even even vegetable-based, plant-based foods, a lot of them are acidified. Uh, a lot of them are anti or not anti-inflammatory, but they are inflammatory. Antioxidants basically don't exist, and so many of the foods are estrogenic because of the toxins, whether it's GMO or non-GMO. But because of the toxins. Um, it combats these elements for longevity, for a healthy life, for vitality, for whatever word you want to use to describe a, a better quality of life. Well, uh, uh, the commercials that I see on TV advertising so-called antioxidant-rich juices like the pomegranate, what is it, palm something or other, these yeah. people have to understand these supermarket juices are pasteurized right. and, and the living enzymes are destroyed. Right. And, you know, it, it's it, yeah. now let me ask you a question. Yes. Is it possible as a way to store a lot of your produce uh, in, in a sort of indefinite way? Is it possible for you to acquire a, a commercial grade uh, uh uh, food dehydrator and 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 uh, with uh, along with a slow juicer, take a lot of your excess surplus produce, juice it, and then dry it into a powder, and possibly sell the, uh, your own organic non-GMO uh, uh, combination freeze-dried powder, or just de dehydrated powdered drink in in cans. Uh, well, we kind of do that. Uh, you know, I have my special fall winter blend and my uh, green power blend, which was a uh, formerly named uh, spring summer. Um, that's pretty much the line that we work on. Now, there are ingredients in those that we do not grow. Um, it would not be financially wise whatsoever and far too time consuming. You mean like spirulina, chlorella and things like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, and as you know, I post often is the, is anything that we provide. I, well, let me step back a little bit. Not everything, but nearly everything we provide is medicinal grade. And there's a huge, huge difference between medicinal grade and other products. And we'll definitely get into a lot of yeah. this uh, later. Yeah, well, you, you be absolutely surprised. But pretty much what you're saying, yeah. um, freeze dry. There are different types of processes that are used. Um, nearly every single process is worthless because of what it does to the food. Uh, when you're talking about a good extractor, that works well, but you have to freeze it very rapidly. We freeze almost all of our foods, whole foods. The only the products that we actually put through a canning process are uh, tomatoes because tomatoes need that heat in order to break the shell of lycopene to be available to our body as, as the powerful antioxidant it is. But as far as uh, canning other foods, no, we don't. We have tons of tomato sauce and lots of salsa, because you know, that's a, that's a powerhouse of lycopene. 
but everything else we put in freezers. I know uh, a honey can be dried because I've seen right. I've seen a pseudo fake uh, Arizona cactus honey. And that's another that's, story, consumer fraud. Uh, the, 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 the government, USDA, whatever, allows these food companies to sell uh, agave nectar powder mixed with uh, yeah. other sugars uh, with a little honey flavor and actually call it desert honey because yep. the damn agave grows in the desert. Well, guess what? It's right. not cactus. It is not a cactus. It is not true high desert cactus honey right it's not it's fake right it, and yeah. but, but they dry it and they sell it as a powder yeah but uh i didn't know yeah. this we'll until. definitely be touching on that in yeah. upcoming series because you know how i am with about honey and pollen yes you know, you've seen my post and i'm very adamant about um, why our honey is the quality it is and we will do a show on honey because honey is an ancient very nutritious, very medicinal food, but we will do a show on that. But let's go to the bands now. Um, yes. Uh, uh, before I talk about the bands, I just want to say say that uh, my take on the uh, epidemic of obesity in America is because of uh, refined carbohydrates and insulin resistance. I I believe in a paleo Atkins type of uh, eating. You, you have to get enough fiber, though, a lot of fiber, but uh, no refined carbohydrates, no sugar, moderate protein, uh, and high phytonutrients. Yeah. Uh, but this is the problem. Uh, our toxic food industry has peop have people hooked on sugar, like a drug dealer would have somebody hooked on, let's say, heroin, and it's a racket. Unfortunately, this is where capitalism has gone it's all about greed the bottom line uh, the uh, people a profit over people and the planet now getting into bands St um, Stephen R. Santangelo aside from being an expert organic farmer is a uh, and a fitness expert he is a proponent on um, exercise resistant bands which he sells his own particular brand now. Take take it from right. here, Stephen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to step back a little bit before I get into what I'm doing now with bands, but step back a little bit with the history of bands because there's a lot of misinformation out there. There are a lot of claims by individuals who uh, call themselves the original rubber band man and a few other uh, catchy phrases out there. Yeah. And some of these people, um, which is, uh, I don't want to just limit it to these particular individuals, but since we are talking about fitness, nutrition, it's all over the net. People steal like crazy. They make claims that are their, that claim they are on their own, but they really aren't. They uh, rip off a lot of people. Plagiarism. Yeah. And unfortunately, in the world of fitness, it's next to impossible to protect yourself. Um, it's just the way patent laws are. Um, you know, I, I have looked into that quite extensively over the years. But let, let's get a little bit, uh, uh, step back a little bit with resistance bands, a little bit of history on it, um, so I could set the truth about them. Um, I won't go into big ordeal about it, but just to give people an idea, uh, and also give people an idea of how I came across uh, bands and why I had been using them for many, many years and how I finally developed my own line. Uh, resistance bands have been on the market since about the early mid 80s. And a fellow by the name of Dick Hartzell out of uh, northeastern Ohio had actually begun experimenting with seamless resistance bands. And over a period of a handful of years, he was able to connect with uh, overseas technology to develop these. Um, eventually, Elite Fitness, Westside Barbell, with their accommodating resistance, um, they began using a lot of bands for their uh, development of power lifters. 
Uh, but when it comes to powerlifting, go to Elite Fitness, go to Westside. They have produced more world record holders than any other uh, club around. Now, regardless whether they're using or natural, you know, that's not uh, the case here uh, for discussion. But they really got into the science aspect of it and have promoted it in a very positive way. Now, in about the last 10 years especially, there's been all sorts of gimmetry uh, all over YouTube and all over the Internet and people claiming to be um, original developers of it. Um, I did play a role in developing resistance bands, not back in the 80s with Dick Hartzell or early on with uh, Westside, but I helped uh, bring to light that there's more than just four or five different types of bands, which Dick Hartzell had initially uh, created, and got all these different sizes, different thicknesses, for all different types of applications. So it took it out of the uh, powerlifting world into the athletic world for a whole variety of sports. And um, I was also the one to bring about all the flashy colors, uh, as you've seen in some of my uh, posts and what you have seen uh, well, they're, yesterday. They're color-coded, yeah. Yeah. And... Um, there And there was a reason for it, because once you start getting into 40-inch bands and the different widths, and then you get to 30-inch bands, different widths, and then into 12-inch bands, 10-inch bands, and so forth, the color coding, more people are going to identify with that than they are if you start calling out numbers. Because you have a bunch of bands on the wall, you know, you call out, yeah, go get that bright orange one. You don't have to tell them, hey, it's a number six, 40-inch, such and such. And... That has helped tremendously to move bands more into the uh, common fitness arena. Now, I was first introduced to bands before Dick Hartzell had actually created these. We used to use inner tubes, and we used to cut inner tubes to different sizes, tie them in knots, and we would do all sorts of crazy exercises with them. Uh, one woman that I got to meet uh, she lived not far from us. She had her business real close. Is a uh, Dr. Victoria Bowden. Now, 35 years ago, she was just beginning to come into her own, and um, she she was still using inner tubes. And I had a well, I worked with her and got to do some great stuff. I, exercises that she had developed at that point, I still use today. Now, Dr. Uh, Victoria Bowden. Um, I still call her Vicki Bowden. Um, she was the uh, chiropractor for the 1984 uh, women's gymnastic team. And she has gone on. She has now worked with world-class uh, athletes, especially elite Olympic and world record holders in track and field. Uh, she is, had been very progressive in her thinking because at that time, a lot of people just didn't think, uh, ah, this stuff is just is not right, you know, this is too gimmickry. We didn't really have the science back then to prove it, but we had the results. And uh, we got along very well because I'm, as you know, I'm very progressive. I'm always stepping out of the norm, uh, but still staying with the basic science, staying with the basics of what's needed for an exercise program. And then eventually, um, when bands became popular, after it was taken out of the, um, the, the uh, powerlifting world, and after it was taken from the elite um, athletic world, that's when everyone was coming up with these ridiculous exercises and promoting it as science. And what they were doing was they were taking the true science of what was being developed and what was being used for accommodating resistance in the 80s and 90s, and then using that to support their absurd exercises. Well, I, I, know, I know rehabilitation... Uh, physical therapists use bands and tubing uh, 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 as part of their uh, uh, 
their profession. I know that, and they and right and they. However, do, yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. However, most of the bands that are used are um, not the uh, professional line of bands like I have or others that have it. Uh, those are bands that are used for a very limited amount of time. And unfortunately, so many people that have not been involved with the athletic world, when they hear about resistance bands, they are thinking of these real thin latex bands that the chiropractors and their physical therapists will cut and then tie a knot, say, you know, use it for this and that. It has its applications. However, to get it out of that realm is where there's a big, big issue and an issue that I have because that's where the gimmickry starts. So they, they, they tear. Yeah. Oh, they tear. If you use one of those on a regular basis, you will be lucky if you get 90 days worth of uh, work out of it. Okay. Okay. Now, also, there are the tubes. I am not fond of the tubes at all, even though a lot of infomercials promote them. Um, I don't care for them. One of the reasons is because with the tube, it has to have a handle. And once you have a handle, your hand has to be on that handle at all times. If you use a tube and try to wrap it around different body parts, just because the nature of a tube being cylindrical, it's going to roll. It's not going to stay fixed. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, with the flat band, such as yeah. I have my line, been distributing for uh, many years now, I honestly can't tell you when I first started. But when you wrap it properly, and put it on a, a selected body part, do any sort of exercise, it stays there. And it works in conjunction with your natural uh, uh, biomotor patterns. And that's one of yeah. the key factors <clears throat> well, of using bands. I snap many a tubing, and yes. it, it always breaks at the same point where, where it enters the handle. Where, where the yep. tubing enters the handle, it has some... Some kind, it has like a round or football shaped rubber plug in there right. to hold it in. And that's where it always snaps. But <clears throat> with a heavy duty band, that never ever happens to me. And I also notice with the larger bands, you really do not need a handle. No, absolutely it's, not. It's extremely comfortable in the hand. And you can very easily supinate and pronate your hands. Like if you're doing bicep curls or, or even if you're doing a tricep extension with a door anchor from the top of the door, it is so damn comfortable. And, and it's so, you know, I mean, you can just, like I said, supinate, pronate your, your hands. And, and I will go on record and say that exercise bands of high heavy-duty quality are just as good, if not better in some ways, than barbells, dumbbells, and machines. They are not, they are not toys, people. They are extremely challenging exercise equipment tools, and they have lots of pros. They don't take up much room. They're outstanding for travel. Fitness suitcase with no problem, workout yep. in a hotel room, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Yeah, in fact, a, a survival fitness program that I had developed for our military special forces some years ago, we use resistance bands exclusively. And um, yes. even some of the guys, when they would go overseas, um, they used to take the bands with them because it was very easy. Uh, like you said, it's very convenient. It's pretty much a... Uh, a home gym in a one little pack and uh, it has you know they have the ability to do prehab work rehab work develop strength develop speed develop endurance uh, fat burning conditioning flexibility mobility uh, muscle hypertrophy body shaping body sculpting oh, warm yeah. up cool down um, active rest restoration it develops eccentric and concentric uh, movements of the muscle, the list goes on and on. Now, even though I am very pro, uh, a very pro band user and promote it in my training, it's not the absolute. It's as you mentioned, it has a lot of good qualities, 
when used properly, but there are certain drawbacks. And every implement has its positive and has its drawbacks. It's a matter of how that implement is used, and it's a matter of what is your goal? What is your desired effect that you want? Yeah, well, obviously, a professional athletes that go on the road, it's perfect for them. I mean, right. I mean, and any it, professional athlete that goes on the road. Yeah, well, uh, almost all professional athletes use them exclusively. Uh, Olympic yeah. athletes, elite athletes, uh, endurance athletes, strength athletes, they use them because they work. But they use them properly. Oh, it's real resistance. The the heavy duty, thicker exercise band is yeah. you know you it'll kick your ass. I mean, you're you're you. It's like lifting weights. It's it's mm -hmm. not a toy. It's not a fad. It's uh it's the real deal, in my opinion. Yeah, and and you know if the bands didn't work, <laughs> well, bless oh, you. Thank you. If the bands didn't work, all these you know, high-end athletes would not be using them. It's, and uh, uh, another advantage with them is that they use them as a single implement, but they could also be combined and are extremely effective with barbells and dumbbells. You know, Westside Barbell Elite Fitness, the big power lifters, they have found the accommodating resistance to be incredible. They could be used attached to kettlebells. They could even be attached to uh, ridiculous weight machines that you find in the gym. You know, um, you know uh, what I do? Of the uh, strongman implements they could be used with. You know what so I it's yeah. all a matter of understanding the purpose. Every implement has a purpose. And that is where the foundation or the baseline needs to be established. Too often trainers just love to jump on the uh, bandwagon. They love to jump on the CrossFit bandwagon. They love to jump on the uh, kettlebell bandwagon. And a lot of them are jumping on the resistance band bandwagon. Well, look at look at the look at the mace. They're use they're using the gata, the uh, the ancient tool called the mace or gata. They're using it as a barbell. They're they're inventing. Uh, these uh, linear one-dimensional barbell type exercises and doing videos of using a mace as a barbell because they're selling their program, their DVDs or their yeah. their certification program. That's another thing to talk about on another show. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry has their own certification. Now, what educational yeah. institution is backing their so-called certifications. So. None of them. None, None of them, them right? Um, you know, and I and I run into this quite a bit. And and you know, since we're on the uh, the, the subject of certification, um, I used to have tons of certifications that I collected over <laughs> years. And and I finally realized, I said, you know what? I'm not going to renew most of these because it's just not worth it. Now, ones that I I still have. And that I've held on to is uh, I'm a certified Olympic weightlifting coach. I'm a level one track and field coach. And I'm a certified resistance band instructor. But from the original days, not the stuff they have out now. Okay? It's ridiculous. So, um, uh, and some people are always surprised to hear this. But I'm also a, a CrossFit certified. However, my certification I was one of the very first ones when I felt CrossFit had a very good plan. They had a very good baseline. Nowadays, CrossFit is not what it used to be. Uh, that's for another show. Uh, I'm a certified uh, biathlon uh, individual. When I say biathlon, don't get it mixed up with the duathlons, which are running and cycling, but the biathlon is like the winter sport of a cross-country skiing and shooting and during the summer another popular one is running and shooting um, and then uh, certain types of memberships that I have which I find do have substance is the United States All-Round Strength Association which is an organization as well as the International All-Round Strength Assort Association is an organization to 
hold on and promote the old time strongman lifts. Oh wow! You know, some of the fellows that we were talking about, um, some of the incredible uh, women of the era of a century ago that I posted on my uh, page. Uh, I like that because it still has the nuts and bolts of really getting into all round strength, not just how much can you squat or how much can you deadlift or how much can you bench, but it really deals with the body holistically. And we touched on this earlier that those uh, early old time strongmen approached strength from a holistic standpoint. They dealt with angular strength. They want to develop strength from every possible angle because so, it so was the wholeness of the body, the natural movement of the body. So functional, uh, 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 all around functional everyday strength exists as opposed to what somebody told me that it was bullshit. It's real. Functional strength in, in doing circular from all angles Right, it's a and, very and real thing. Yeah, that's a huge, huge advantage for resistance bands. In fact, resistance bands are the only implement that trains the body in a true three-dimensional fashion. Wow, I'm impressed. And, and it's yeah, thank you for saying that. It is impressive. It is uh, just absolutely yeah. phenomenal, and that's one of the reasons why I emphasize this in my. Uh, training clients, uh, training groups, whether it's working with SWAT, whether it's working with law enforcement, first responders, um, the military, as I mentioned, uh, special forces, because their task is very three-dimensional. That is very different than a 100-meter sprinter. It's very different than an 800-meter swimmer. It's very different than an Olympic lifter. It's very different than a power lifter. It's very different than a bodybuilder. So the foundation has to be established so that baseline develops to their particular needs. Right. And, um, wow. I, and, and everything with the bands supplies that. Now, it's not to say that these guys don't do deadlifts. They don't do squats. They don't do bench or bicep work. And as you know, you don't have to tell a guy to do bench press or work his biceps because every guy is going to do that anyway, whether it's in the program or not. So it's just a matter of a trainer or for myself to monitor that so it doesn't become dominant, a dominant force in training, and it takes away from the more important aspects to develop basically a 911 life-saving situation. And that's why three-dimensional training is so useful for those particular uh, yeah. uh, professionals. That well, you, you, you should definitely put together a series of uh, work, uh, of band workout DVDs, uh, fitness band DVDs. I think it would be fantastic. It would be, you're very qualified to do it. Thank you. I Well, believe it or not, I used to do that a lot. But what happens is a lot of people would buy the DVDs and then they thought they didn't need me as a trainer. <laughs> so from a business standpoint, there was a, a little bit of an issue there on finances. So um, I think it's, oh gosh, it's it's been maybe about five years now that I sold the last of my DVDs. Well, and also on my yeah. Facebook page, occasionally you will see I will post a, a few different exercises using them. <laughs> However, I do not go into depth because for those clients that are paying, deserve to have all the information, deserve to have the best. Yeah. I like to introduce people to using resistance bands and educating them. But if they want to take it to that next level, they hire me and they get to go to that next well, but level. They, but you have the population in Kentucky, in your region, to have enough one-on-one -on -one clientele. Well, yes and no. That's another subject we could talk about later. You know what I mean? It's like uh, yeah. you're, you know, you're in a, uh, you have a large organic farm, so you must be in a rural area. I mean, uh, so so maybe a source of income might have to be the DVDs, but unless somebody wants to fly you out and you and do seminars like some of these jabronis I know, they're getting. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, one one guy in California is, is getting uh, he asked for a hundred and thirty dollars a person to attend one of his workshops on uh, swinging the mace I mean uh, I think that's pretty expensive but if people like that are actually getting clients mm -hmm. to uh, to pay and attend a workshop and and people are flying him out and putting him up in a hotel. My God, and, and he's not nearly as qualified with certifications and, and training as you are, and he's getting all this money per head for his workshops. Yeah. I mean, you know, if, if you could very easily do band workshops with your bands, mm -hmm. teaching band training, I mean, fitness band training. I don't want people right. to think we're like, you know, heavy metal, rock and roll. You know, it's fitness band training, and you bring extra bands to sell to the people right. at the workshop. Right. And um, now, when we had our second home in Vegas, uh, and that's a heavily populated area, yeah. um, it was a lot easier to do that. Um, exactly what you're saying. Now, I'm going to be getting back to doing that. Over the past five years, we've been uh, really putting the focus in what we want for uh, our, our food supply, what we've been providing for people, building the uh, Primal Creations uh, Private Buyers Club, which is like a food co-op, but different. Um, so, you know, the, the focus changed a little bit, but I will be getting back into that, where I will be doing the seminars, exactly what you said, taking the bands along with me. And, um, and and getting people re-educated. And, uh, you know, we could talk about that more often. Um, I don't yeah. want to use this as a podium to sell my uh, seminars at this point. Oh, but it's an idea. I mean, I mean, I mean, you, you, Absolutely. you. And I understand and I appreciate you uh, mentioning that yeah, and bringing it up for your listeners. I mean, I could picture you uh, discussing healthy eating and uh, talking about, what you do on your farm, and I'm, I know you sell certain products from your farm, like honey, and um, and I and then you can go into the bands, and at the end of the seminar, you got a whole load of bands, and, uh, and blah blah blah, and they fly, like I say, they fly you out like a like a like a famous professional wrestler. They put you up in a hotel, you do the workshop, and if somebody that has very, very little academic qualifications is making this much money per person and getting flown out. There's yeah. no reason why somebody like yourself, with your caliber, can't do it right. the same thing. And oh, I just want to mention, you know what I do with my bands? I hook, I learn how to attach them to the Shenna board and I do the, uh, the Persian and the Hindu push-ups with band assisted Shenna workout and I've also learned to attach them to the abdominal wheel so you yeah. know that that Bob Backlund uh, abdominal wheel thing I, I, I hook the bands up to that too so like you were saying before the versatility of these bands is incredible yes yeah they're, they're just absolutely amazing you know? um, and, and squats for God's sakes, uh, let's say squats or whatever you want to call them, Hindu, Hindu squats. You just wrap them over your shoulders and you do free-handed squats. Yeah. You just put one end over your shoulders and, and, and the other end under your feet. And I have right. various sizes on my shoulders, so I am doing drop sets. I'm doing. Yes. It, I'm going real heavy and I'll, I'll, I'll whip a couple bands off my shoulder and I'll keep on squatting and then I'll whip another couple off my shoulder until I have no bands on my shoulder. Yeah. And, and I'm, one, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. I was just going to say, the bands are so versatile that, uh, you know, my grandchildren, before they were age five, would use them. And my mother, you know, bless her soul, she passed away last year at age 92. Oh, but wow. she was using bands three weeks before her passing. And, you know, people think, you know, wait a second. You know, 
they see pictures of me and I'm using these monster bands and some uh, exercises I'm using over 400 pounds of tension. And um, they think, well, gosh, I can't do that. But I have developed so many different sizes of bands and so many different resistance capabilities that anyone could use them. Um, a lot of exercises, you know, my mother being in her early 90s at the time, I would just have her do the exercises in a chair. Sure. And she'd still do it. I you mean, know, there I, are others yeah. where she'd be able to do it standing. But again, it's learning the appropriate application of the bands. I can picture you training Major League Baseball pitchers to do rotator cuff exercises with, with the bands. I mean, I, there's, some, this is, there's, there's a huge potential. Right, and I, I have worked with some, uh, some of the elite athletes. Um, I've worked with some Olympic qualifiers in track and field, and bands were a very integral part of that. I mean, and yeah. I, I do want to say, it's not to, not to pat myself on the back, but anyone that I have ever introduced with, with uh, elite athletes who I have introduced with resistance bands improved performance. Now, anyone could introduce bands to any athlete, but if not properly applied, their performance does not go up. And that yeah. is a very important case aspect. If you take a top athlete who's already pretty much at the top of the game and you are able to improve, that says something about the application yeah. of that implement. I mean, of course, proper to me, proper form not only means optimum results, but proper exercise form also equals safety. So you're getting optimal results and you're, you're exercising safely and and I rather I rather uh, emphasize perfect form over the amount of resistance any day. I mean, you can you can you can uh, you right. can uh, you can uh, gain you can get more gains from a moderate thickness band using proper strict form than you could getting sloppy with a with a heavy duty band. Same thing with right. dumbbells and barbells, you know. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, technique is always priority, uh, yeah. regardless of whether you're a high-end athlete an just a, or an everyday fitness person, uh, rehab, prehab, a technique always needs to take priority. Yeah. However, there are times when you get to the point where you've got to go a little beyond technique and you've got to execute a certain way. Uh, you take a look at any uh, top deadlift competitor. You know, the form looks really great, but when they get to that point where it's between these two guys, who's going to win, basically technique goes out the window. Even though it's inherent in their uh, biomotor patterns, it's now do or die. It's, I'm going to grunt. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Well, that's and then uh, sometimes think, yeah. oh my gosh, how did that guy ever do that and not blow his back out with yeah. 800 pounds plus well, pulling that weight? Well, because winning is how they get paid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And also, they have had those years and several years of experience of properly training technique. Yeah. So their body is able to accept something beyond that. Well, before um, before we say goodbye, I wanna I wanna tell you that I I am particularly fascinated with doing more research on a uh, talk about old time strongmen. There was a, there's a guy by the last name of Zass. He's, he was he was Russian. Yes. And he did isometrics using chains. Yes. I am very interested in finding out more about him. I, I never heard his name mentioned until this past year, and he's he was an old time strong man. He was he was Russian. I think it was during World War One, and yeah. Zass, uh, Z capital Z A A S S Z A S S, I believe. Yeah, I believe I have some information on him uh, in one of my files. I'll uh, double check that. I'll definitely get it to you. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
What I would like to do is just for those who are not familiar with me or familiar with my page, if they want to go to facebook.com slash stephen.santangelo.75, uh, they could go on my page, check it out. It's a public page. If they like it, shoot me a friend request. If they want to uh, uh, contact me direct, other than through Facebook messaging, they go to Primal Creations at AOL.com. And um, those, they, those two yeah. uh, contacts are the best way to get a hold of me. Um, I'm very open to communication, and I emphasize communication with my clients and with anyone who wants Okay. And if they want to, if they want to purchase, let's say some of your uh, organic wildflower honey or some of your bands, they can also do it by communication from those pages. That is correct. Uh, every so often, about every three months, I run our top twelve selling products on the Facebook page. Uh, we go through PayPal right now. Uh, we no longer have a website. I closed my website about a year ago. We pretty much use social media. It's uh, more effective. Uh, it's more efficient. Uh, PayPal also is uh, considerably more secure than other methods. We have downsized in that respect to make it as simple for people as possible. Well, you could you could very easily have a free Facebook promo page, like you know, where people click like. Do you have you have one of those yet? No, haven't gotten around to that. Uh, we could talk about that as well. Yeah, yeah, just just haven't gotten around to that. Yeah, it, uh, my it, wife and I are very very busy. You know, other yeah. than uh, with our uh, food supply for folks and what we do with our critters, um, you know, I do have the fitness business, the nutrition business, right. and of course my own training and uh, competitions. So we just want to take things one step at a time. We used to be much, much bigger. Well, the re learn to yeah. downsize and prioritize. The, the reason why I mentioned the free Facebook promo page where people click like is yes. because you can access those pages without signing into Facebook or even having a Facebook profile. The, the general public can, can go mm -hmm. to the link and see everything on it like it was a web page. But if you go to a, if you want to open up somebody's profile, you have to log in to see it. That's the reason why I mentioned it. It's it's a yeah, very it's I appreciate very, it. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. Yeah, then. sure. But but anyway, uh, I, I I must go. Uh, and I thank you profusely for being a guest on my show. I enjoyed it, and we will. Definitely do the series on other topics. And um, um, as you can see, the background of the show, people, those are examples of uh, Stephen R. Santangelo's uh, uh, fitness bands of different sizes. And, and, and remember, it's, it's Stephen as in S-T-E-P-H-E-N, not V-E-N. Right. I don't want people going S-T-E-V-E-N and not getting your page. You know, I just want to yes, let you know. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. So anyway, thank you. And I will talk to you very soon, sir. Well, thank you for having me. And you're very welcome and looking forward to more subjects to discuss. This was very invigorating. Uh, you know, uh, getting you're getting two very excitable, uh, passionate, uh, enthusiastic Italians together, man. It's like a whirlwind over here. That's right. Like a whirlwind, but uh, we'll talk soon. All right, sir? Thank all right, James. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. This has been a Megalife 21 production.